XR immersive projection spaces. Welcome, Hilary. All right, thank you. Great to be here. And uh, thank you for to the LBE track chair and to everyone at AWE who's done such an awesome job of pivoting to the online format. It is great that the community can still come together. So as a brief introduction to who we are and what we do, we often joke that we are not that Illuminati. Uh, we're not building a new world order. Instead, we create interactive experiences with immersive projection design. So an audience enters a physical space and they're surrounded by imagery and audio. We make domes, panoramas, globes, custom spaces, uh, interactive interfaces, all sorts of ways to showcase and interact with 360 content. Most of our systems run on our OmniFocus fisheye technology, but we stay agnostic in order to be scalable. So we can do multi-channel and LED for very large scale installations. We are driven by the belief that the technology is much less important than the story that you're using it to tell. And to that end, we've developed a suite of software to support a whole range of content and user interfaces. What we really do is create group XR experiences in shared physical spaces. And these experiences are opportunities for people to connect, to connect with the content and to connect with one another. So a little background on the company. Uh, the founders were working in initial waves of XR tech back in the 90s. Uh, it became apparent that most of the projects they were working on were more effective in group settings than as individual experiences with VR headsets. On the enterprise side, they were working in medical technology, architectural visualization, and collaboration tools. On the enterprise, on the entertainment side, the fun stuff, they were doing art installations, festivals, and parties. So with a focus on group interactive experiences and a focus on the fun stuff, uh, the Illuminati was founded in 2003. So where does our work fit into the XR ecosystem? The decision on what type of XR to use is going to be determined by defining the user experience. So when a client comes to us with a project, we ask them, what's the story? We look at the content that they're showing and look at what will best serve that specific content. VR headsets are great for individual or avatar-based social experiences. Uh, AR, MR, spatial computing, not that we have to tell the AWE audience this, uh, enhance the real world around the user. We see our systems as complementary. Physically immersive spaces are an extension of VR and that we create an entire reality. Like a headset, we fill the user's field of view entirely, so there's a sense of complete immersion. Spatial audio and interactive to crucial components of creating a sense of presence of being there. XR and immersive projection spaces connects the digital world of VR to the physical world that we're in. So one benefit of this approach is that it solves for the physical challenges of headset-based experiences, in particular throughput and hygiene, which will probably have heightened importance uh, in a post-COVID reality. But what really makes this approach to XR effective is the social collaborative nature of group XR. Because another challenging aspect of headset-based experiences and a barrier to the widespread adoption of the technology is isolation. Rather than isolating the audience into individual screen experiences, immersive projection spaces let people experience content together. So there's a wide range of applications and business benefits for this approach to XR. Uh, we work not only in entertainment, but also in enterprise and education from design review and civil engineering to virtual production to planetariums. But immersive projection spaces have a wow factor that is maybe best put to use in out of home location-based entertainment. 
So a fun example of that, uh, we'll show in a video here, an experiment with multiplayer interactivity that we did um, with this Unity game inside our 360 degree cyclorama. And we can play the video. So the 360 cyclorama is especially well suited to this one because both the players and the audience are inside the game world. Whether it's a game, a ride, or a movie, entertainment experiences are just more fun when you experience them with the friends or family or colleagues that you came to the venue with. There are also opportunities to meet new people and connect in real life. So location-based entertainment faces a marketing challenge in the era of OTT when there's endless quality streaming content at home, and who knows what that's going to look like uh, post-corona, but Immersive XR provides a draw to leave the house and a reason to come out and play. The fun factor of being able to play with your friends is one thing, but the practical benefits of this approach extend beyond maintenance to accessibility. Immersive projection is open to all ages and all abilities, and this often makes it the best fit. So a perfect example is a project that we did with DreamWorks, pop-up holiday activations in malls with a virtual sleigh ride to the North Pole, kind of an immersive upgrade to going to see Santa at the mall when you were a kid. They considered headsets, but given the young age of most of the audience and the fact that the families wanted to experience it together, meant that it was ideal for group XR with immersive projection. Of course, any tech-based experience with high throughput, especially kids, is going to have challenges. Uh, for us, it was about designing a system that end users, in this case, Santa's elves at the mall, could easily operate. So simplicity in design is a requirement for deployment at scale. The same concept of simplicity and effectiveness in design is especially useful in the Discovery at Sea project on Princess Cruise Lines. It's part of what we've seen as a strong emerging sector in LBE, travel, tourism, and hospitality. Our Geodome Portable Immersive Theater is on 11 princess ships around the globe, and they're hosting educational shows that add to the family-friendly and all ages experiences the cruise line can offer. The collaboration is an opportunity for cruisers to connect to the Discovery brand in person. So this is obviously a sector whose future marketing plans are gonna be challenged by the pandemic. But an immersive projection approach enables safe and unique experiences that appeal to diverse audiences because experiences are really the most attractive product on the market. The experience economy lives at the intersection of entertainment and enterprise. Our clients' projects and experiential marketing are based on principles from the entertainment world. It's all about engagement and the right experience for the right user. Pop-ups, trade shows, festivals, all of these are live brand activations, and if done right, they build customer relationships and earn customer loyalty. It's about connecting clients with brands, XR for CX. All modes of XR are part of this strategy, but the high throughput and low touch factor of projection are highly useful. The social factor of immersive projection space makes it memorable and they're also selfie friendly. This can be a design challenge, especially for deployment at scale. The open design that attracts people and provides that engagement is also a challenge to the ideal lighting conditions for projection. 
And that's another reason we're adding LED to our product line. The compound curve screens that we need to create immersion are now available with better pixel size, pixel density, although of course that is reflected in the price point. So in the tech sector, our clients and their clients are often have the challenge of communicating about complex concepts or abstract concepts like AI and machine learning. XR is a way for consumers to connect with these technologies firsthand and intuitively understand them. This is really useful for brand activations. It also works well in executive briefing centers where groups of people are exploring big data together. As in this example, we worked with an integrator to provide the projection for the cloud theater at NetApp. In both these cases, the ability to collaborate is key. It's really important for the group of people to work together. Again, leveraging the principles of engagement and interaction that work really well in entertainment. At NetApp, we also provided an immersive uh, edit suite to create content for the big theater, a small panorama where editors can work without headsets. This kind of virtual production is another way that immersive projection fits into the XR ecosystem. Another client, Magnopus, has a panorama which they have used for production in the production pipeline for building XR and CGI content. It's sort of a dailies unit. The creative team can work together in the 3D environment as they're creating it. They can also show the content to clients and hear clients feedback in, in real time. Again, as Magnopus puts it, we are connecting the digital worlds they're building with the physical world we're in. We are also working at the intersection of entertainment and education. We help our clients leverage tech from the entertainment world to create compelling experiences in the arts, sciences, and humanities. Idea Lab at Ball State has a large scale panorama. In collaboration with the History Channel, they've built virtual explorations of Stonehenge and the Pantheon. Another recent commission they did was a virtual version of the Broad Museum, which you can either explore with VR headsets or walk through as a group in the Idea Lab's big immersive space. Also at that intersection, our projects and museums are probably closest to the heart, especially the ones that bring earth and space science to life. Again, it's our philosophy that the technology is there to serve the story. And what story is cooler than NASA landing a rover on Mars? Our projects range from installations at the Smithsonian in collaboration with NASA JPL to an interactive exploration of how music becomes sound at the Moseum in Asheville, North Carolina. To science centers and planetariums of all sizes serving all demographics. And we have a video that we can play of the Moseum. And just like in location-based entertainment, true immersion depends on interactivity. The sense of agency in an interactive experience is part of connecting with the content because the users own their experiences. It's the difference between being told a story and seeing yourself in the story. It then becomes your story, and then it's truly meaningful. So we create custom hardware user interfaces that leverage standards from the game industry like Kinect, Leap Motion, VR headsets, and camera-based controllers. 
So in conclusion, it's an interesting moment, shall we say, to talk about bringing groups of people together in shared physical spaces. But I see potential here in, in many ways. User interface design in LBE was fast evolving well before the COVID pandemic, exploring ways to improve user interface with touchless technology from gesture-based experiences to wearables and even facial recognition. As we emerge into a new normal, conditions are going to inspire innovation with very thoughtfully designed user experiences. I also think that now more than ever, we're craving connection, real world experiences. Zoom is awesome, but how happy are we going to be when we can share experiences in the real world with our friends, family, colleagues, even strangers? I think that we all have a new understanding of both the benefits and the challenges of interacting through a mediating device. So XR and immersive projection spaces is an opportunity to connect and to collaborate within a shared physical space. And I think we're all gonna be ready for that. So we'll see what happens next. And happy to take any questions at this point. I'm confused. Hi, Hillary, how are you doing? Hey, that was great good to see you. Thanks. Great to see you. Thanks for uh, thanks for that presentation. Wonderful, as you know, I'm a huge fan of projection mapping, and um, everything that you talked about: full immersion, the visceral experience, the potential for education, and um, everything in between, not just location-based entertainment. So, thanks for sharing that. Um, do you have some questions from the audience? And if we have time, I have one of my own. Um, <laughs> So uh, the first is what techniques um, are you using to measure the success of these experiences? Sure, absolutely. Well, uh, throughput is a huge one. I think it sort of you know depends on the venue, but being able to show how many people can experience it, especially when we're comparing it to another sort of immersive technology that might require a headset, that sort of thing. Um, you know, longevity is a pretty important metric. I think we've had some clients running their systems for years and, you know, being able to update them as the content technology and interface technology moves along. On the educational side, we have had the opportunity with some grant funded projects with NOAA, especially uh, to really do some uh, assessment and understand what the, the takeaways are and compare those to more traditional methods of educational communication. And we've had some really great results. I'd be glad to share um, projects. I, my, I guess my uh, contact information isn't there, but I'm on LinkedIn and available, yeah. Great, um, we'll throw one more in there. What do you think about the CGI influencers? Can a dialogue with a CGI influencer or a simple chatbot be considered interactivity? That's a pretty interesting question. It, you know, it's sort it's of, a, it's I, certainly I, it is. I, I, it's, it's, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's interactivity. You're, I'm here, you're there. I'm making decisions based on what's happening between us. But at the same time, you know, what is the takeaway and is it is it the same as, as it would be with other humans involved? So good question. Good answer. Um, do you frequently use stereo shutter or other methods to attempt to get a full 3D experience? Uh, yeah, we have done that. We, we certainly do support stereo, usually active stereo in the domes. Two things. Uh, one, the stereo glasses eat the projector brightness. So you really have to amp that up to compensate. And the other is really kind of just from the experience side. It's already kind of a lot. You know, you've got uh, imagery everywhere, fully immersed. So uh, while, while some things in stereo absolutely call for, I think, uh, 3D projection, in some ways it can be almost overstimulating visually. So again, as I was saying in the, in the uh, talk, it kind of comes down to the right experience for the right content. But yes, totally sure. possible. And I think the last question I'd have to say is, you know, you talk about selfies and obviously we know in LBE that selfies or the sharing on social media is a big part of the marketing and the awareness drive. Um, lighting and getting the right photo and being in an environment that um, that you know might be darker in certain areas. How, how do you counter that? How do you address that? Right, that is a challenge. And I think it sort of comes down to 
it, you know, if you're in a fully immersed space and it requires darkness, that's a non-selfie moment, but maybe you compensate with some really bright content and sort of encourage it through the content in that time. So you're sort of solving for that while you're developing the experience, I think is the way to go. Great. Well, Hilary, thank you so much for joining us today. This was fantastic. It's great to see you again. You too. Absolutely. Thanks, everyone.